So here to answer, if only, um, we have Valentin. I'm not going to try pronouncing his last name, as I mentioned. Uh, so Valentin works at a company called, uh, well, I pronounce it Zalando. I believe it's Zalando. I have a terrible German accent. And the way I first met him is he told me, like, yeah, if you live in Europe, you know exactly what this company is. If you don't, then you don't. Um, but actually, we should, because uh, they IPO'd last July for about 5 billion euros, which at the time was $7 billion. Now it's about $5 billion. But um, <laughs> all right, OK, enough comedy. So with that said, uh, Valentin was in charge of their database platform, and he chose Postgres and actually has done some very unique things in terms of architecting it and making Postgres work within uh, his organization's requirements. Valentin also saved me personally last year when one of our speakers unfortunately had to drop out because they were sick, and he happened to be here with a talk already prepared. I was like, hey, you want to give like a scalability talk? So um, after tweaking the title, um, Valentin like, came, you know, worked like all night, you know, tweaked the talk, came first thing in the morning, gave it, did a wonderful talk. And you know, when he submitted his presentation this year, much like Ramo, we rejected it and asked him to do a keynote. So. Without further ado, Valentin, please come up. Hi. Uh, yeah, I, it will be very difficult to beat Rommel uh, <laughs> on the charisma part uh, or on anything that is uh, telling. I wonder if this will work. <coughs> oh, yeah, good. So. Um, Yes, I will be trying to, to uh, deliver the kind of the message how we at Zalando, the, uh, the company that uh, actually nobody is aware of in the uh, US, uh, use Postgres. And uh, uh, yeah, so we are in a nice store and uh, everything is fine and shiny and uh, it's just easy. It's very easy to build an online uh, store, to, uh, kind of it just do what the uh, one of the CMS pages and kind of you, you build your online store. The problem was that uh, Zalando started to grow uh, by 100% every month and didn't stop for several years. So um, very, very fast it was that kind of uh, the PHP store uh, based on MySQL didn't scale anymore. Uh, so we re rewritten everything with Java and Postgres and uh, yeah. I had the possibility to uh, put some additional things. So, uh, yeah, so it was a wonderful theoretical part from Rommel, and uh, I will try to give, uh, yeah, I, I thought it will be uh, more kind of practical, but uh, it's kind of practical, kind of theoretical, yeah. So, this is Salando store, yeah. Fashion, fashion is hard uh, because uh, actually you don't know. Uh, immediately what kind of fashion and what kind of uh, kind of uh, things people will like to wear tomorrow yeah so it's kind of it can be like this or uh, maybe like this uh, yeah so it's kind of and yeah this, this is a huge problem yeah so it's kind of uh, uh, to 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 keep up with people's needs and people's uh, kind of uh, 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 inspires, so to say. Um, yeah, uh, the problem is that everything that is kind of under this shiny uh, online store is kind of dirty, sometimes not so nice. Uh, so, and uh, it's not like this, uh, like on this nice picture. So sometimes you have to operate something like this. And we have three of these, and they are huge, kind of huge. Many people work there. Uh, uh, yes. and. Uh, you have to have something that you can trust your data to. And the trusting your data is kind of some, something like for the online store, you have kind of something like this that is underneath uh, so kind of the online fashion store. Uh, for the company that is doing real business that trusts its data to the database, something like this happens. Yeah? So uh, the question is, of course, is it easy to use Postgres uh, as something that you can trust data to? And uh, yeah, it should be actually easy, but yeah, let's, let's try to answer the question. Is it easy to use Postgres or not? Yeah, actually, 
it's one of the most stable open source projects that I ever uh, have seen. The uh, kind of strong gatekeepers uh, like Tom Lane uh, and uh, some others uh, don't let any Sorry, bullshit. Is, is it okay to say it? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Patches to pass through. Yeah, so um, I personally uh, had a chance to roll out uh, Postgres 9.0 release candidate 1 in production as we were starting because I didn't want to start with 8.4 and then migrate. It was a risk, uh, but we didn't have any live issues during the rollout. It was an impressive... Uh, uh, experience and uh, just two years ago, I think we we found one database that is still was still running on 9.0 release candidate one, without a single problem. We just forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, we, we built the monitoring and we found it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, it's incredibly stable code and uh, it's um, really uh, impressive how difficult it is to kind of to break it, yeah. We tried. Yeah, the ability of Postgres to keep minimal locks really unleashes the uh, Im immense power. The, the problems that actually uh, led huge companies to create NoSQL databases, the, the problems that, for example, that MySQL has, uh, it's not bashing, it's just kind of, yeah. The, the problem of not being able to change the data model as fast as possible uh, is, is a huge problem, and Postgres doesn't have it in most cases. And it becomes better and better and better. So uh, as an example, our developers at Salando they actually do up to 100 data model changes per week. And we didn't have a single downtime or sim single problem that was actually, uh, um, yeah, the, the, oh, shit, I, I forgot the English word. Uh, uh, the, the, we didn't have a simple, si single problem that was the, uh, that was, uh, oh, okay, good. Uh, <laughs> um, that was based on this, uh, kind of on the data migration of model change. It's incredible. Uh, we created the whole process that uh, kind of the developers can actually uh, go on and uh, kind of um, uh, in, uh, introduce changes and we are supporting them. The, the, of course, as the, pro, uh, as the uh, person who uh, is uh, aware of uh, Postgres more than just a simple uh, developer, uh, yeah, one should always support them. The, uh, we at Salando taught every Java developer that were before actually PHP developers, some of them, uh, to write SQL and write changes to the database and actually uh, run for themselves. They don't need database guys to create changes to the database. The only thing that we do, we, do, we just review some of the code uh, of people who are new and uh, people who actually are really uh, Long time at the company, we are kind of just allowing to roll out everything by themselves. It's incredible speed. They don't have any problems of changing data models. And uh, yeah, if they're well trained, it's just uh, miraculous. Um, store procedures. Rommel also actually uh, mentioned that. The store procedures at Salando are the core of actually of success. Uh, that we have there. So all the data uh, access to most uh, important uh, products and projects uh, actually is done through the store procedures. Uh, one can think it's a complicated stuff to do, but we came out with a very easy way to version store procedures. You don't need to do kind of very complex uh, rollout procedures. It's really impressively easy way to use store procedures in Zalando, uh, at, at Postgres, at Zalando as well, because we have the process, we have the tools. Uh, what we don't have, though, is, for example, automatic diff generator for data model changes. This is the problem that kind of we are still working on, but yeah. But store procedures are cool. And uh, 
Java developers don't like to write store procedures uh, as they think SQL is slow or difficult or they j just can't uh, perceive it, yeah, train them. When they understand how cool SQL is, they even understand how cool Lisp or Clojure is. Uh, they, they start learning uh, Clojure and then run to me and say, oh, it's just like SQL. Yeah, okay, SQL is better because uh, Clo Clojure doesn't have planner. Uh, I sometimes think, why the hell there is no store procedure uh, language for small talk? It would be really cool. And then the kind of, uh, uh, yeah. Another thing that is actually impress, impressive in Postgres is how compact the storage is. How easy it is to actually to add new columns without uh, actually uh, need to rewrite the whole table. How easy it is to store uh, modeled data, the data that you actually, uh, that where you have the schema uh, and not just a set of attributes like in JSON or uh, just another, uh, document, so to say, how compact it can store it. Uh, we haven't, we experienced Im, uh, impressive relief, so to say, when we managed to uh, proxy all accesses to one big MongoDB cluster through uh, a small custom written uh, Java process that speaks uh, MongoDB protocol, rewrites all the requests to SQL and sends them to the uh, actually event store database that we have in uh, Postgres. We threw out the Mongo cluster, big Mongo cluster with five nodes. Uh, yeah, and now one, one for now, one uh, cluster of the uh, database uh, runs it. So uh, it's incredibly efficient, It's it takes less space, it fits in memory, yeah, it's cool. Uh, the thing, the impressive thing that comes in, this is a very promising thing that comes in, is the logical replication. So uh, kind of, it actually gives you a lot of possibilities that uh, are coming. The multi-master replication is coming. Uh, faster major version upgrades. It was possible to uh, really upgrade minor version really, really fast. Uh, now it will be possible to do the same with major versions. Uh, partial replication, very important because you will be able to create some uh, kind of clones of your database that uh, holds only the data that you need, like cache updates. You can actually stream your logical data stream into Memcache, Redis, Cassandra, Mongo if you need. It's an incredible possibilities that are opening up for Postgres community. Uh, monitoring, yeah, many say there is no monitoring possibilities for Postgres, but actually uh, there are a lot of uh, monitoring possibilities. So uh, we at Zalando also contribute to open source by kind of, uh, we created this PG View and PG Observer. There are other cool and impressive projects. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's easy to monitor, it's easy to uh, keep track of everything that happens. PG Observer, for example, is uh, actually based on the uh, fact that we use store procedures, so it more, more analyzes uh, much more of the uh, store procedures with uh, trying to do predictions about the kind of the uh, instabilities in the pr performance and so on. So uh, it's really an uh, impressive system. So I, I could talk about advantages of using Postgres a lot, uh, but I probably don't have much time uh, because I want to also talk a little bit of uh, the things that actually, the, the challenges that the, uh, uh, our community uh, faces. So is Postgres easy? Uh, sometimes it looks like this uh, when you are actually doing things that are not so easy to do. For example, there is no way to install it by one click. What I mean with that is, of course, not that you kind of uh, just take uh, the default installation and that's it. In most cases, you still have to tweak 
this big configuration file. But for example, RDS and Heroku uh, do it for you really cool. Yeah, they just click, you have one installation, and kind of you have one instance. Of course, this is a little bit different thing, but maybe somebody can contribute in, in, in that by kind of doing the installer that just installed it on, on your machine and uh, kind of asked you two, three questions and, and you have it. It's not about uh, high-end database specialists who use it. It's about developers who can just easily roll it out and uh, uh, try it out and say, oh, this is a cool database that supports stored procedures and, and, and uh, blackjack. Uh, yeah. Um, high availability. High availability is something that actually Postgres has, but it is with a quirk. Yeah? So you still, there is no standard way of uh, kind of failing over. You still have to have some tooling to do it. There, there, there are uh, impressive uh, um, recipes for uh, Pacemaker, for example, that work. And uh, last year, uh, on one of the uh, uh, talks, uh, the, uh, it was presented how, uh, I think it was ISOC, yeah. So they, they uh, created the cluster uh, of, that was bound with Pacemaker that was actually doing automatic failover really uh, without any intervention from uh, anybody else. Unfortunately, this project is not open sourced. Uh, we need more uh, engagement in this area as well, I think. Uh, automatic sharding is something that uh, Simon sometimes uh, uh, once uh, told me that uh, he doesn't believe that you can take uh, kind of uh, many dogs and uh, they should uh, kind of uh, push the sledge. Uh, it, it can be one big elephant. Uh, in most cases it works, especially for the big companies that need huge amount of uh, kind of data. But um, we also saw that uh, sharding data into kind of in parallel uh, model, uh, data models, data schemas uh, onto several machines helps a lot because you have kind of separated uh, uh, parts. Uh, if one fails, then others don't. Uh, they fit in memory in most cases and uh, kind of there are advantages. And uh, there is also a progress. Uh, Cisus Data also uh, created uh, an impressive product uh, like uh, PG Shard, and uh, kind of uh, we are using uh, a Sproc wrapper that automatically shards your requests uh, from the uh, Java application to, to several shards and calculates the shard IDs and uh, does some magic. Um, <coughs> it's uh, the recently, just uh, I think last week, uh, Tom Lane committed the uh, big. Uh, uh, patch that uh, enabled uh, inheritance of uh, foreign uh, data tables uh, from the uh, kind of from the normal table. It opens up huge possibilities actually for uh, version uh, 9.5 I suppose uh, to uh, shard your data from uh, the database uh, transparently. Yeah, you would be able to kind of create kids that locate on different charts. Um, yes, so what I want to have from the uh, Postgres is that kind of the uh, elephant uh, herders actually play cards and uh, enjoy their life uh, and the Postgres is uh, just running uh, for themselves, uh, not giving us any trouble at all. Uh, this is easy to say. The question is, yeah, what, what you as a uh, participant of this uh, vibrant and nice community can do, yeah? So there are some hints from me because I'm kind of, I'm trying to follow these hints. Uh, I don't manage to follow them all. Uh, help to uh, test better versions. This is very important to uh, actually uh, invest into infrastructure for testing your systems when the new versions are coming out. At Salando, we have staging environments where kind of two layers uh, before production and uh, kind of as the new version comes out, we are rolling out the, uh, we call it release staging, patch staging, whatever, uh, kind of the, we are rolling out the new uh, release candidates kind of uh, immediately to check if our code is compatible, if there are any issues with the uh, kind of with the 
with the system yet. Helping uh, to test uh, pre-release versions will definitely help. The problem, uh, one of the previous versions, I think it was uh, 9.3, uh, the problem was that all previous versions of Postgres were so stable that nobody actually cared about testing 9.3 uh, version. Uh, it looks like it. Because this was the uh, version that uh, had kind of issues with some corner cases and uh, there was not tested. So it's kind of one can discuss uh, uh, how can one actually improve on that. But unfortunately, if you think that somebody will test it for you, you are wrong. Uh, there will be always first person who gets the error. I understand you don't want to be the first person Nobody wants to be the first person to see uh, where the error, uh, kind of experiencing the problem, especially the complex problem. But we should support, we can support the uh, community by creating staging environments, by creating, by, by uh, inspiring our developers to use new versions and test them uh, for their uh, test environments and so on. Support positive companies. Uh, Postgres companies uh, are the ones uh, that are actually uh, driving the uh, progress in uh, Postgres community quite far. So the most important patches were support, uh, kind of provided, uh, so recent patches were provided by uh, such companies. I don't want to name uh, the, uh, kind of to, to name them, no, not to forget about somebody, but uh, it's very important. I myself failed to support one of them. Uh, but uh, we're trying to do uh, what we can by open sourcing tooling. Um, another tip, so to say, is to about participating in commit fests. This will increase the amount of uh, kind of code reviews. If you can invest into your developers, uh, invest your developers in the uh, in participating in commit fests, it will be really an impressive uh, advantage for Postgres community. Review the changes, participate there, and kind of uh, everybody, and then it will reduce the risk that uh, you will be the first one who will see a big problem with your system. Uh, and of course, open source your tooling. Uh, that we are trying to do, we kind of, we open source everything that we provide for Postgres, uh, and uh, many other companies are also trying to do that, but apparently not many. Yeah, so uh, um, not all of them, uh, many, but not all of them. Uh, yes, so these are more or less uh, things that I want, wanted to say, and um, I hope, uh, yeah, it was not too boring to listen all this kind of uh, adva advices from the old man. Uh, mm, yeah, so uh, this is more or less what I wanted to say, and. Uh, Thank you very much for your attention and uh, yeah.